English Chronicle, sir? I never read the Chronicle. But your ad, sir. Ad? What's the matter with it? Same one I've had for the last two years. Look. Is that Elmer Lane again? No, mm -hmm. so. Oh, idiot. Oh, Father, what? What's the matter? It's libel. I'll have him fired. I'll have him arrested. I'll kill him. What's wrong, Father? Is it... Is it Elmer? It's always Elmer. Daily Chronicle. Elmer Lane, managing editor speaking. Just a minute, I'll... I'll connect you with the city editor. Good afternoon, Miss Harrison. Hello, Betty. How do, Harvey? You look a bit worried, sir. Got a right to be. See that ad of mine in yesterday's Chronicle? Did he saw it? Oh, I wouldn't worry about that too much, sir. See, being a newspaper man, I would naturally notice it. Being a newspaper man? You? Didn't you know? I've been appointed correspondent for Chicago Daily Blade in this county. That's so. Well, congratulations, Harvey. That's only the beginning, sir. As soon as my uncle's estate settled, I'm going to buy the Chronicle. Good. Somebody ought to buy it. Buy the Chronicle? But I thought... See, when you buy it, do me a favor, will you? Fire that nincompoop Elmer Lane. <laughs> Oh, dear, I, I forgot to order the groceries. I'll go with you. No, no, don't bother. You, you go along and keep father company. Sure. Come along, Harvey. I want to hear about that new job of yours. Oh, Betty. Elmer, Harvey Schumann's going to buy the paper. Well, I'll start delivering it this afternoon. I didn't say subscribe. I said buy. He just told father as soon as his uncle's will is settled. No. But, but I'm going to buy the Chronicle. Gosh, I've been thinking on it all the time. Well, I even spoke to Mr. Boss about it. He told me he'd sell me the whole paper, lock, stock, and barrel, for $5,000. You know, I, I told you. Gosh, I, I've been saving up there. 
I can buy it. Oh. I'll win this contest. Crunchy's radio essay contest. Elmer. Well, what's the matter? Gosh, Betty, it's a swell idea. They're offering $5,000 for the best essay. <laughs> there it is. The best? Wrote up myself. Sometimes I wonder why I put up with you. Crunchy's radio contest. The only contest you could win, Elmer Lane, is for the dumbest man in the world. Sure, I could... You only had to spend all your time and money buying silly radio sets and, and fooling with nutty contraptions and taking airplane lessons. Oh, gosh. Boy, Gibbon flies an airplane, and old oh, oh, McIntyre is always flying. If you want to be a good newspaper man, you have to know how to fly. Yes, if you want to be a good newspaper man, you'd better get down to Earth. What are you so mad about? Oh, I'm mad because... <laughs> I'm not mad, Elmer. Don't you worry, Betty. Leave everything up to me. You're such a lovely fool, Elmer. Honest. Oh, gosh. Gee whiz, Betty. Five o'clock. I gotta get the paper out on the street. Well, mail this silly thing. Oh. Going home, Betty? Uh-huh. Come on, I'll take you. Betty, close the door. not be able to get the Chronicle. Elmer Lane's figuring on buying it. Yeah. <laughs> what could Elmer Lane do with a newspaper?
When you hear the gong, it will be exactly 11.15. Gosh, I must have had China. I'm Elmer Lane of Claremont, Wisconsin. What a handicap. What do you want? Well, I'm with the Claremont Daily Chronicle. Please to me. I'm with the Chicago Daily Star. Oh, is that so? What can I do for you? Well, I want to cover Claremont County. With what? Well, I... I guess you don't understand me. What I want to get at is this. You fellas need a correspondent in Claremont County, and I'm the logical man for the job. Well, how did I? Now, the Blade has a correspondent there, and I thought... And you're right. Here. Here's the card that will let you telegraph the news to press rate. We pay the usual press rate on all accepted copies. I suppose you write a vigorous news story? Yes, sir. Why, well, last week I wrote oh, a story. Fine. I'm glad to have met you, Mr. Lane. What is it, Charlie? Another batch of that boot like perfume being peddled around. Yeah, send out a notice to correspondents, border and coast cities to snoop around and see if they can find out where it's coming from. Yes, sir. The bird. The bird. I've been reading about those perfume smugglers. I'd be glad to help you find them. Thank you very much. That's all right. I'd be glad if you did. Yes, sir. Eddie, you hire the most unusual people. Yeah, and I get the most unusual news, don't I? here. I'm out of luck. Yeah, I wish I had the money. I sure would help you. But I'm fresh out of dough. Oh. Certainly sorry about your top, Elmer. Oh, it's all right, Bill. Healthier without a top anyway. Bill's new invention. But how? 
fellow's on the radio beam. Land us this time, Bill. I've got to get back. Father doesn't know where I am. Good. I mean, <laughs> doesn't he? Let me know if you need anything, Bill. See you later, Elmer. Yeah. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Gee, she sure is a swell girl, isn't she? Thanks. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to announce the winner of the Big Crunchies contest. Winner of the first prize of $5,000 on the best essay on Crunchies is... Elmer Lane of Claremont, Wisconsin. Who? Elmer Lane of Claremont, Wisconsin. Bill! <laughs> I win! Few financiers like myself have taken over practically the entire issue. Oh dear, 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 I must be. Well, uh, just a few financiers like yourself? Why, well, I, I guess I could be called a financier, sort of. Maybe. Well, glad to have met you, old man. Oh, Mr. Waddington, I, I, I guess you think I was a pretty nosy fellow if I ask you to let me in on, say, a uh, hundred shares? Well, no, uh, not nosy. How would you like to take a little jaunt up to my room? Oh. Hey, Doc. Can I speak to you a minute? Why, uh, certainly. Business associate. I don't suppose you remember me, but my name's Flint. Detective Flint. Oh, yes, of course. I'm afraid you're out of business in Chicago, Doc. Well, you can't hang a man for trying. Oh, but we can get him ten years. Yeah, that's true. That, that's true. That's very true. It's now uh, 10.30, Doc. Now, if you should happen to be in Chicago at 10.30 tonight... Oh, apple time. Apple time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to the Crunchies program. For the benefit of those of you who may have tuned in late, we wish to announce that the Crunchies essay contest First prize of $5,000 was won by Elmer Lane of Claremont, Wisconsin. Elmer Lane of Claremont, Wisconsin. Young man. My first class ticket to Claremont, Wisconsin. Yes, sir. Elmer Lane, Claremont.
I ran it up to 50,000. It seemed only a step then to my first million. <laughs> oh, my first million. That was a long time ago. A long time ago. Mr. Waddington, will you give me a statement for my paper? Indeed I will, young man. You may say that I am here looking over your thriving little city with view to finding suitable investment for my uh, surplus money. Investment for surplus money? Gosh, gee whiz. I've got just the thing. Bill Hilton. Bill Hilton? Yes, sir. He's an aeronaut, uh, an aviator. Uh, he's a flying engineer. Mm. He's got an airplane that flies on a radio beam. It flies by itself. Really? I'll take you out there right now. Where's your hat? Here. It's a wonderful idea, Mr. Waddington. You'll see. It's wonderful. Indeed it is. The wonder to me is that someone hasn't financed it already. With your foresight, uh, hadn't you considered it? Well, I, I hadn't thought about it. You see, I've been thinking about buying the Claremont Chronicle. Claremont Chronicle? You mean the newspaper? Yep. My boy, I'm just a little bit disappointed in you. Should I do it? Should I do it? Well, I don't know, sir. I dislike taking in partners. But then I mustn't forget that I made my first 50,000 through the counsel of an older and more experienced man. Should I do it? Yes, I will. What? Take you in. With your little insignificant $5,000, you shall become a man among men. My boy, you have a rendezvous with destiny. Have I? Come on, let's go. When, where? First, we'll go look at the invention. Second, we'll form a company. And third, we'll make you the president. President? You deserve it, my boy. We'll make this young man Hilton the secretary. Come. It's fading away. Your I was not to blame. You have forgotten the promise that your love has not the same. I'm tired of trying to make Ten o'clock. Ten? Mm -hmm. That plane flies over here every Wednesday night exactly at ten. Mm -hmm. There's one goes over at twelve, too. They're probably mail planes. Nah. The mail plane runs fifteen miles west of here, over Holgate. Let's sit in the plane, Cal. room. So, so your father went to bed, huh? He wasn't feeling very well tonight. Good. Or I mean, I mean, he should go to bed early if he doesn't feel well. You tell him about me winning the crunchies contest? He read it in the paper. What'd he say? He said you'd probably invest it in some silly idea and lose it. But I told him you were going to buy the chronicle. Oh. Oh, you did, huh? Why? Well, I, I, of course, I haven't got the check yet. But don't you worry, Betty. I'm going to do big things. I've got a rendezvous with Jackson. I know what people are saying about me. 
They're saying that I'm just a big mouth. But I'm not. Of course you're not. Gosh, Betty. You sure look pretty in the dark. Or, I mean, I mean, you look dark. <laughs> in the moonlight. Gosh, Betty. You sure are pretty. Well, there's nothing the matter, dear. Suppose you two young people want to be alone, don't you? Well, I'll run along. You must be served. <laughs> oh, by the way, Elmer, drop by the store when you have time. Okay, Mr. Harrison. Goodbye, Mr. Harrison. Goodbye, Elmer. <laughs> what have you done? Nothing. Well, why is Father so... Oh, I guess he's just beginning to realize the truth about me. What is it? Mr. Waddington and myself are going into a little business enterprise together. Elmer, have you got that crunchy check yet? Well, yes. I mean, uh, no, I mean, Betty, this is a secret project. Elmer Lane, if you don't get it back, I'll never speak to you again. But, Betty, I I'm the president. Who ever heard of the president drawing his own money out of a firm? And besides... Then that settles it. I'll never... Oh, Harvey! Hello, Betty. Going my way? Certainly am. Yeah. Oh, dear, I, I forgot to order a book. Hi, Harvey. Hello, Elmer. You win, gentlemen. I shall release to the local citizenry a limited amount of stock in the Radio Beam Airplane Company Incorporated at, say, uh, oh, $25 a share. You can put me down for 50 shares, Mr. Waddington. I'll take 52. I mean, uh, 50 also. Will 25 shares be too little? Gentlemen, while you're making out your checks, I'll sign your stock. Bugs Fuller. Bugs Fuller. What? Did you say Bugs Fuller? Bugs Fuller is dead. Five bullet wounds in his back. Swell. Did you get pictures? Pictures? You mean photographs? Sure. Pictures of the body. Get him and get him in here tonight. We've got to beat the star. Well, hire an airplane. 
Airplane? But the only airplane in town belongs to a man who works for the Star. That correspondent. Well, don't let him see him. Listen, I'll tell you what you do. Now, get this. Get a dog. Yes, a dog. Put him in a mask. They're taking the airplane guy and telling you about a dog with a veterinarian here. Understand? Dog. In basket. To veterinarian there. Right. Now, put the pictures in the top of the dog basket. Get it? I understand, sir. Okay. What's the matter? How did my dog sick? Who's sick? I thought he was sick. His dog was sick. Elmer! Elmer! Elmer, you gotta help me. You got to. What's the matter, Harvey? My Aunt Bertha's dog's broken his leg. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, Elmer, you just gotta help me. Well, Harvey, I'd like to help you, but I can't set no dog's leg. Oh, I don't mean that. Listen, boys, there's a veterinarian in Chicago who's the greatest dog surgeon in the world. I phoned the city head. I mean, my Aunt Bertha phoned him, and he said he could set the dog's leg if we could get him there in the next three hours. Otherwise, he'll die. And you want us to fly him to Chicago? Yeah, they'll pay $100. I mean, my Aunt Bertha. They, uh, the veterinarian will meet you at the airfield in Chicago. Can't. I can't fly the plane. I'll take him. But, Elmer, you've only about two hours solo. Well, it only takes two hours to fly to Chicago. It isn't worth the risk, Elmer. After all, it's only a dog. A life's a life. Even if it's a dog's life. That a boy, Elmer. I knew you'd come through. Now remember what I told you, Elmer. Don't worry, Bill. Just stand back. Stand clear. Now let's see. What did he tell me to do with these things? Oh, gosh. I won't use them at all. Chicago, here we come. <laughs> I hope. in the basket, see? The pictures are in the top. Tommy, you and Jerry get pictures of this guy from every angle. Do you understand? Okay. Okay, well, good. Look. Here he comes now. Why, certainly. This is Dr. Manfrey. Doctor, I want you to know, uh... Elmer Lane. Great to meet you, I assure you. <laughs> Why, Mr. Lane, I want to congratulate you on this noble achievement. You'll probably win the award for the most humane deed of the year. Award? What award? What award? <laughs> These gentlemen here want a picture to show to the award committee. Would you mind posing for them? Hold it! Thank you, pal. Thanks, old man. Chicago Daily Star reporter flies pictures to Daily Blade. I read it, sir. Oh, well, that's some satisfaction. You can read, anyway. Now, answer me yes or no. Is this Elmer Lane one of our correspondents, or is he not? Yes, but the, the mere fact that... Then why is one of our correspondents carrying exclusive news pictures to our competitor? I don't know, Mr. Walters. All now, I... Now, listen, Bird, the next time anything like this happens, I'll fire you and all your staff. You understand? Now, that's all. Yes, sir. But that's all. Bird. Mr. Bird, I'll bet you're surprised to see me, aren't you? Yeah, I'm surprised that you even exist. <laughs> hmm? Get out of here before you're carried out. Gee, Mr. Bird, you look mad enough to kill. Listen, don't put ideas in my head, will you? Look at that. 
Hmm. I've been the victim of a conspiracy. Get out. Hmm? Get out. What? Get out! All right. Have it your way. Gosh, you broke the window. Hello, boys. Hi, how are you? Hello, Jake. Has Alma been around today? No, he ain't been in today. I understand the county is thinking of putting him away. Is that so? Oh, oh hello there, Elmer. How's your Aunt Bertha? <laughs> <laughs> Think you're funny, don't you? Not as funny as you, Elmer. How long will you be, Jake? I got a date. I'm practically engaged to be married, you know. Oh, is that so? Yeah, that's so. My uncle's estate's gonna be settled in a couple more days, then I'll have $10,000. $10,000 enough to get married on, isn't it, Ruby? Goodness, I should say so. Who are you marrying, Mr. Schumann? Young lady named Betty Harrison. Now, wait a minute. 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 And if you were such a good newspaper man, you'd find out who killed Fuller and why. You know Elmer? Well, I got a theory of my own that I'm working on for the star. Yeah, does the star know about it? No, no, now, no, wait a minute. I'm going to be Elmer. No, all right. Don't worry. I won't harm him. <laughs> Tell us, Elmer. What is your theory? Well, the coroner says that Fuller was beaten to death. He also had five bullet holes in his back. Why would they want to beat a man to death that was already shot five times? You see? <laughs> Get the idea? Now, if, if he was thrown from an automobile as the coroner says he was, who threw him ten feet away from the road? <laughs> you see? You can't answer. Can you? Sure I can. He wasn't beaten to death at all. He fell from an aeroplane <laughs> after he was shot. Why not from the Empire State Building? <laughs> <laughs> oh, go ahead and laugh, you hyenas. But remember, he who laughs last, laughs last. Mr. Lane is president of the newest enterprise in this city. Practically everyone has invested in that enterprise. Perhaps, now mind you, I say perhaps, there may come a time when you will want to profit by a similar investment. If you're entertaining such a thought, my young friend, forget it. Well, now don't interrupt. I am not one to show discrimination as a rule, but you, young man, shall not be allowed to purchase one single solitary share of that stock. Barber. Once over, like. I told him the man wasn't shot and thrown from an automobile. He fell from an airplane. <laughs> he couldn't answer that. If Harvey Schumann was so smart, he'd solve the murder and catch the criminals, instead of hooroing everybody about it. Uh -huh. Oh, hello, Betty. Hello, Bill. Oh, hello, Betty. I brought you some fruit. Yeah? Well, it's nice of you, but you didn't have to bother. I'm, I'm pretty near well now. I know, but I... Well, you see, I, I'm head of the local Red Cross, and... Well, I'm supposed to do that. Uh, have some fruit, Elmer? No, thanks. Oh, why don't you two get together? You tell Elmer I'll never speak to him again. She says she'll never speak to you again. I guess not. Then maybe what Harvey Schumann said was true. He says... He says maybe what Harvey Schumann said was true. Ask him what Harvey said. Uh, what? Hmm. He said they were engaged. Said engaged? It's a lie. Well, you tell her that he was hoorawing me about it. He was hoorawing Elmer. I heard what he said. 
He was hoo-rawing Elmer because Elmer was telling him about his theory, about how that, that man Fuller got killed. I was standing over there, and I heard every bit of it. Well, you tell her that was nothing to hoo-raw about. The man fell from an airplane. Uh, nothing man plane. Maybe it was one of those planes that goes over here every Wednesday night. Maybe it was... Gosh. You tell Elmer for me that if he'd stop theorizing and start proving, he'd get further. Goodbye. Uh, Bill? He said if you'd stop theorizing and start proving, you'd get further. Goodbye, Bill. Gosh. Tell her, Bill. Tell her, my sweetheart. Uh, goodbye, sweetheart. Not you, me. Gosh, now you bungled the whole thing. Gee, Willikin. Gosh. I don't know what you're thinking of. Oh, what are you laughing about? Oh, God. get going. Those fellows may decide to fly over a bit earlier. Good evening, Elmer. Oh, good evening, Mr. Waddington. Bill? Elmer? We still have a few shares of stock left, and I thought it might be a good idea to place a modest little ad in your paper stating the fact. A little publicity won't hurt us. No, sir. Publicity is the thing, Mr. Waddington. I did something else, too, for publicity. Well, 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 well. Yes, sir. I sent your picture to the Chicago Daily Star with a long story on the factory. Well, now that's fine. That's just love. Uh, my, my picture? Yes, sir. I snapped it with a candid camera. Isn't that Doc Horton? Yes, sir. That sure is Doc Horton. Looks like our correspondent isn't the only sucker in Claremont. Run the picture and do a story on it, will you? What is it, young man? What is it? Mr. Waddington, I, I want to apologize. Now, this is no time for apologies, but I'm going to apologize to Elmer, too. Your apology I... is accepted. Now, good night. Well, was there anything else? Uh, yes, sir. I, I was wondering if you'd change your mind about selling me some stock. Well, now, uh, uh, how much stock did you want? 200 shares. 200 shares? That's $5,000. But I thought that you... Very well, young man, but you'll have to make a cash deposit. Well, I have the cash right here, sir. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, yes, yes, certainly. I tell you, boys, these big finnets are no tougher than anyone else. See? Hello? Yes? Yes, he's here just a minute. Hey, Harvey, Chicago's calling. Oh, thanks. Hello, Chicago, this is Harvey Schumann. Schumann? Why haven't we got that story about Doc Horton selling all that stock to those Claremont people? Doc Horton? Well, I don't know any. Waddington? You mean J. Rutherford Waddington? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
God! I just thought of something! calling Chicago. All right, 23, go ahead. Another plane has been following us for the last 150 miles. I'm afraid they're figuring on hijacking the cargo. Get the air police. Yes. Hello, Chicago Air Police. What's in that cargo? A hundred thousand dollars worth of radium. guy was following a plane with a hundred thousand dollars worth of radium. He had this gun. Can you identify him? Oh. Wait, Mr. Burke. Wait a minute. Sit down. Wait, is this the screwball hey, that had his picture in the blade? Yeah. Hold him a while, will you, Brad? Give him a good scare. I got you. Hello. Oh. Hello, Mr. Bird. <laughs> this is Elmer Lane. You're fired! Bird. Hello, hello. I tell you, we'll never see him again. Father, don't say that. Elmer Lane, come in if you hear me. 
Elmer Lane, come in if you hear me. Radio beam control and I'll operate it so you can climb up and fix the strut. You mean I, I should crawl out on the wing and fix it? Yeah. above
Airplane Company, Incorporated. That, that nut with the shotgun and the homemade airplane. <laughs> Get off this channel, you dope. But you don't understand. There's an airplane firing at me with a... Why don't you use the shotgun? Well, how could I... Hey, wait a minute. Oh, I never thought of that. Head on, number one. Head on, number one. guy on the plane. Are you sure about this? It was operating all by itself. No, sir. A new kind of radio beam idea. Okay. to see you land. Came down to see me? <laughs> Gosh. There he is. There, there he is. Elmer, Elmer, they won't get off the field. You, you can't land. But what am I going to do? I can't stay up here forever. You can't land with all that crowd on the field. Tell him to go back to Chicago. Go 
back to Chicago. Yeah, but, but I haven't got enough gas. Dear, what will we do? I've got it. Let me see. Elmer, listen. Circle over to the far side of town and drop in the parachute. Okay. Huh? It's the only thing to do. The crowd will run over to see you and I can bring the plane in on the beam. Yeah. God. But I've never... It's so... Good old ground. Mm, good old ground. <laughs> oh, Elmer, darling! <laughs> Whatever made you jump? Ah, it was easy once I found a ripcord. Elmer, I'm proud of you, my boy. We're all proud of Elmer, you. Elmer, I want to be among the first to congratulate you. Thank you, Harvey. I'll bet you'd be surprised to know I got 400 shares of the stock. You have? Sure, see? Well, I'm sorry we can't pay off on this, Harvey. What do you mean? Well, look. Salt mines in North Dakota. So you're going to treat me, are you? Well, let me tell you something, Elmer Lane. Someday the worm will turn. Yeah, well, why should he? <laughs> He's the same on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> Elmer, the grateful citizens of Claremont are proud to present you with this slight token of our esteem. <laughs> Friends? new watch. Betty, what time is it? It's time you kissed me, Elmer Lane. <laughs> 